this is the restricted answer was in a 19 paper this is the restricted answer with the supplementary sheet of data so it's a little bit kind of moved around just so I can get everything on. Okay, first thing it says, read through the supplementary sheet for question one before attempting this question. So on the right hand side we have the date, we have the full supplementary sheet. Okay, the vein squid is a mollusk species found off the west coast of Scotland. This species undergoes a daily vertical migration in the water coming up to the surface to feed at night and diving to deeper depths during the day. Figure one shows the anatomical structure of a squid. Okay, so we've got our little picture here. Okay. By relationship, sorry, the relationship between size and age of squid was investigated. Size was determined by measuring the length of the mantle, so this section here. Okay. Um, as the squid migrate up and down in the water, the changes in pressure affect the formation of crystals in the squid's balance organs. These are known as stratholiths. These crystals show up as rings that can be counted to show the age of the squid in days. Researchers collected data from squid ca caught off the west coast of Scotland over a number of weeks, measuring mantle length and counting the growth rings for 29 squid. And then we've got our plot. Okay, so the stratholiths were the crystals that gave us the age. And then we've got the mantle length. And then you've got all of the dots for the 29 squid. And, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not a perfect straight line. It's not a nice, you know, looking for a trend like that. I don't... In Entirely see one to be honest for that one at all. It's the, they are scattered pretty much everywhere. Okay, many marine organisms use external fertilization. This process is slightly unusual in squid, as the male squid produce capsules of male gametes called spermatophores, which are transferred to the mate females during mating. One individual female squid can lay thousands of eggs. All right, sorry, with the scooping down. Okay, the researchers analyzed squid caught by commercial fishing boats. Figure 3a and b show the relationship between mantle length of male squid and the length and number of spermatophores produced in mature male squid. Okay, so we've got in 3a the mean length of the spermatophore and the mantle length. So this is this just literally size of squid and how big is the package of sperm that they produce. Okay, and then you've got um, in figure 3b again the length of the squids, the size of it, and the number of these packages of male gametes they produce. Okay, the sexual maturity of individual squid was estimated using a scale of 1 to 3. Stage 1 was the most immature, stage 3 the most mature. If the squid are in stage 3, they reproduce actively. And the last set of data that you have, figure 4 shows the proportion of squid at each maturity stage caught over the course of a year by commercial fishing boats. And we've just got a coded bit here. So our stage 1 so these are the least mature, it's the dark banding that we've got down the base here, none marked at all. Okay, and then we've got stage two, which is our white block, and then we've got stage three, so these are the sexually mature ones. Okay, are in the, the grey that I'm just colouring over in green so I can see it a bit better, although maybe just making a mess now, but I can, helps me see what's going on with the data. Okay, right. Okay, right, let's go back and look at the questions. Right, refer to figure two. So figure two, this is why I moved it, um, so I could have them close to each other. I'll get rid of my little line that I had on there. Okay. Um, Within a species, there is usually a positive correlation between size and age, where larger organisms are older. So it's kind of nice, they're giving you, they're not just saying positive correlation, they're then telling you what they mean by positive correlation, for the bigger it is, the bigger the next, the other number is. Use this figure two to explain if the data supports this for vein squid. Now, as I said, I can't see that data. That line that I just took out again, put back in, is that line there with an increased mantle length has increased age in days. I mean, you've got you've got these ones here, which are biggest in terms of mantle length, but they're not the oldest. The oldest, I mean, you've got here. You've got really quite an old one, but with a smaller length. So the data is really not, and it's not just outliers. These are, all of these are above a kind of line of a midpoint that you might pull, and these are all below. So it really doesn't support. The majority of them are not on a nice trend line that you can find. So I have to explain it. Okay, so I'm not going to get away with just saying there's no correlation. 
because I've got to explain if the data supports it. So what I'm going to say is that there are um, larger squid. Well, actually, to start off with, I would say it doesn't support. Okay, it doesn't support because, okay, using vein squid information, so um, some larger, so some larger squid are younger and some younger or some smaller are older. And we could see that it's no correlation. Because really, if I was going to put a trend line for that one, I would end up probably just going, uh, it's pretty much middle here. You know, I'm just saying it's not really, it's not really a good line. Okay. Um, B. Researchers use some evidence published by other scientists to support their work on ageing squid. Give the term used to describe published summaries of current knowledge and recent findings in a particular field. So is this one here, just give. This is a state, so it's something from your content statements. This is a review. That's it. Okay, explain why many marine organisms use external fertilisation, because it says down here many marine organisms use external fer fertilisation. So external fertilisation is where the sperm are released into water so that they can swim to the eggs. And that's really what you have to say. Um, sperm are released to swim in water to the eggs. Okay. Give one cost of this type of fertilisation. Well, it's kind of the same question that you have with parental care. If you go with a a vast number of, of offspring. You can't put a lot of care into them, so a lot of them don't make it. Exactly the same thing happens here in terms of you have to produce an awful lot of eggs and sperm, hoping that some of them will actually fertilise. So you're going to have a lot of a lot of loss um, or unsuccessful. So so you need to make a need to make a lot. Okay. Explain how figure 3A suggests that larger males may have a reproductive advantage. That one's pretty straightforward. Okay, so our larger males was our mantle length going along this way, and this is the mean length of the spermatophore, and it says here uh, we've got capsules of male gametes called spermatophores. So if you've got a longer spermatophore, you must have more male gametes in there. So um, so that's a kind of nice, this is, look at that, that's a pretty clear positive correlation on that one. Um, so basically good positive correlation. So larger males make more, not more actually. That's be very clear on the terms here, be larger or longer. Spermatophores, which equals more male, more male gametes. Okay, does the figure in 3b also support this conclusion? And that's not quite so good, okay, because in this one, you have your mantle length doing exactly the same thing. Uh, the number of spermatophores doesn't look quite so clear. I mean, I think there is, there is a correlation in that that's, I think that's the trend. I think there's an upward trend, but then you have some really quite a lot that you'd say would not fit perfectly to that trend. So you've got one of the, t one of the longest males here, um, but it's producing the smallest number of spermatophores. So even though it's producing the, some of the longest spermatophores, which you would say have the greatest number of gametes in them, they're not producing very many at all. So if you've got a smaller one that is producing, like here, producing a lot more spermatophores, even though they've got less length in them, you're still going to end up with more gametes in there. So I don't think it fully supports it. Okay, so, so not fully. 
because and it says justify so if you say no and then don't justify no mark if you say yes and don't justify no mark okay so not fully because um some longer squid produce smaller numbers of spermatophores Um, or you could go the other way, you know, that you have some of the smaller ones are producing larger numbers of spermatophores, therefore that will kind of even out. You could also go the other way, and I think, you know, when you look at the mark scheme, it will allow you both. Um, so if you, you could you could go yes, and you could say that you've got a weak correlation there. I mean, it, it is there, I think, but it's not great. Okay. Um, identify the month which would have the highest breeding activity. This is from figure four. I'm going to spin this down a little bit. Okay, so figure four said that squid in stage three are reproducing actively. Okay, so the month that would have the highest breeding activity, given I'd coloured in all of this, uh, stage three, I coloured in green, so definitely March. Squid eggs can take 30 days to hatch. Okay, explain how the data for April supports this finding. Well, 30 days, so April is 30 days after the greatest breeding activity. So the eggs from that will have hatched. And if you look, because if you look at April, you've now got a big chunk of stage one, which are your, your youngest ones. Okay. Squid can take over a month to mature from stage two to stage three. Suggest a reason for the unexpected decrease in the proportions of squid at stage two caught in May. So yeah, we have this big chunk of um, stage one in April. So I'm expecting that all of these guys should go to a big white block in May and it's not. So something must have happened to a pile of those stage one. Um, so you just got to go with anything, anything that's because it just suggests suggest a reason. Um, so go for your biggies for controlling population, predation, uh, disease, competition. And yeah, the, any of those. I think predation is probably your best one, uh, predation or disease. Um, they even had ecological disaster, um, something quite dramatic that could have happened to cause the unexpected decrease, um, but anything reasonable. And that was that big data handling question.